If it isn't Kaida Harakazuha, what brings you here today? Huh? You two know each other? Yes, the Kaedahara and Amenoma clans were both members of the Raiden Gokaden. Historically, there have always been deep links between the two clans. After I returned to Inazuma, I visited Mr. Amenoma to pay my respects. Yes, you may recall the story of the Raiden Gokaden from the Iridori Festival. Though all bladesmiths trace their craft back to the same source, over time, each of us has arrived at a different blade-making philosophy, spawning the development of different branches of the same art. As an example, the Amenoma art strives to emulate the abiding patience and determination of water as it turns stone to sand. There is nothing mystical to our work. There is only practice, day in and day out, until both body and mind have memorized the craft, turning each motion of every technique into an intrinsic part of the bladesmith's life. As for the art of the Kaidehara clan, I believe it's called the Ishin art. That's right. Ishin art strives for complete harmony between blade and mind from the moment that forging begins. For only a blade thus forged can capture and convey its maker's thoughts and feelings, and eventually become an extension of its wielder's will. Indeed. Most samurai choose their blades, but an Ishin blade chooses its owner. You are, without a doubt, the most worthy wielder of an Ishin blade. It gladdens my heart to see that although the Kaidahara clan has fallen on hard times, its ideals and virtues are alive and well. You overestimate me. My actions are guided by my own personal sentiments, not by any noble aspirations on behalf of my clan. But let's get back on topic. The purpose of our visit today is to gather some information on your missing nephew. We hope to assist with the investigation. It may turn out that this case is connected to another we are pursuing. Ah, oh, yes. My nephew. <sighs> I reported the case to the Tenryo Commission, but I haven't heard anything back so far. He didn't say a word before he left, which is very unlike him. I'm still completely at a loss on what to make of it, but I've done what I can so far. Worrying is futile. All I can do now is wait for the news from the Tenryo Commission. We heard that there was a collector involved in the disappearance too. Know anything about that? Yes. On the morning that Yuya went missing, he gave me a very cryptic look and said that he was going to give me a great gift. I believe he went to collect the item from Mr. Nagato after that. The next thing I heard was that a fire had broken out at the warehouse, and neither of them came back. Yes, strange, isn't it? I wonder what could have caused it. Unfortunately, there was very little evidence left behind, so nobody knows what really happened. Hmm. Do you have any thoughts on what Yuya may have wanted to give you? If I had to guess, it must have been some kind of rare weapon. Otherwise, there would have been no reason for him to get my hopes up. He's never been particularly interested in blade forging, but has always had a fondness for blade testing, and can sense even the most minute differences in blade quality. He is extraordinarily talented in martial arts, particularly when it comes to the art of the sword. Truth be told, we have some information that you may find to be objectionable. The person we are looking for, he attacked this friend of mine. Based on the evidence we have gathered so far, only Yuya seems to match the suspect's profile. What? No. Absolutely impossible. Yuya is not that kind of person. He is humble and kind. Even his training is done with the goal of calming his mind. 
He has never gotten into a fight before. Huh. Is that so? Yes. If there's one thing I can say for certain, it's that Yuya would never draw his blade without a very good reason. But, with that said, it's equally out of character for him to just disappear with neither farewell nor fair warning. I also cannot know what course of action he might be capable of if coerced or otherwise compelled by circumstances unbeknownst to me. Anyway, should you find him, please let me know as soon as possible. Don't worry, you have our word. Hmm, from the sound of that, Paimon doesn't think Yuya was the one who attacked us as well. Yes. It sounds as if something happened when the two men met each other. Let's pay a visit to the Nagato household. I'm very sorry, but we cannot afford to pay what we owe right now. My husband has gone missing, and I'm still trying to find him. No, no. You misunderstand us. We are here to help with the investigation. We'd like to ask you some questions about Mr. Nagato's disappearance, if we may. Ah, oh, I see. I thought the debt collectors had come to visit again. I'm sorry you have to see me in this dreadful state. Has some new information come out? Do you know where he's gone? I'm afraid we don't have any new information at the moment. We're still trying to find out as much as we can to inform our search. With this in mind, can we perhaps ask some questions about your family's current situation? Uh, for example, Paimon's struggling to understand why a collector would be strapped for Mora. <sighs> That's a long story. Ever since I've known him, he's been an avid collector of all sorts of things. He'd always get so animated when he was showing them to me. I knew nothing about the items myself, but seeing how enthusiastic and excited they made him, I was happy to believe that they were just extremely important to him. Everything was fine when we first got married, but as time went by, things changed for the worse. Uh-oh! What happened? He lost his sense of restraint. He started buying more and more things, and even resorted to borrowing money just so he could pay for them. Our expenses really spiraled out of control when he started getting interested in weapons. It was awful. There were days when he'd spend hours down at the warehouse, admiring his weapons even as debt collectors were descending upon our house. He wouldn't sell them, wouldn't even touch them. Just sat there staring at them like he was in a trance. I'm happy he has a hobby and I'm willing to support him, but making ends meet has to come first. I've tried talking to him about it so many times, but he never listens. On the last day that I saw him, I gave him an ultimatum. I said, if he refused to sell his collectibles and pay off his debts, I would divorce him and take the children with me. Whoa! And that led to an argument. Actually, it didn't. Generally, he's a quiet man, who likes to go with the flow. On most things, he leaves the decision-making to me. You must understand, I never would have dreamed of threatening him with divorce if the debts hadn't pushed our family to the brink. After I said those words, he froze and was silent for a long time. When he finally spoke, he awkwardly mumbled that he would pick out a few items to sell. His voice was so meek and pitiful that I felt an urge to take everything back. 
But then what? If I didn't draw the line, what would happen to our family? Had I not indulged his bad habits, we wouldn't have found ourselves in such a predicament. And I also don't know if he had actually come to his senses, or if he was simply angry with me. The next thing I heard was that our warehouse had caught fire, and both he and the buyer had gone missing. I see. I understand. Amin Omayuya came to purchase a weapon from Mr. Nagato. During the sale, a fire broke out at the warehouse, and both men disappeared. At first, I assumed they must have gotten into an argument over the price. But my husband has never been one to negotiate. He never even haggles when he's out buying groceries, so it's hard to imagine him getting into a fierce argument. Hmm... Maybe he was feeling the pressure from the debts? I don't know. He just disappeared after the warehouse burned down. Perhaps he's too afraid to come home, now that all his collectibles have been lost in the fire, and he's got no way to pay off our debts. <sighs> Even though I'm still a little mad at him, we're a family, and I want us to face our family's crisis together. As long as he's willing to turn over a new leaf, I know we can work things out. Please don't get upset. There could be more to this situation than meets the eye. If collecting things is a habit that Mr. Nagato had his whole life, it is quite unusual for this habit to change so drastically over a short period. But the information we gathered from the other side suggests Amenoma Yuya is also a mild-mannered man who would not be likely to start an argument. Hmm. This situation is getting a little confusing. A little confusing? More like completely mystifying! Let's try a change of scenery and see if we can piece together what we've learned. Rest assured, we'll notify you if we find anything. <sighs> Thank you so much. I just want him to come home. Based on the information we've gathered so far, I can only surmise that the sales meeting between the two men was somehow the catalyst for their disappearance. The fire at the warehouse likely played a part in how the situation unfolded, though its exact role is a mystery. Do you have any thoughts? Uh, um, well, Pina was thinking that maybe someone accidentally knocked over an oil lamp and, um... Nope, never mind. Paimon's brain needs to rest for a while. Over to you! Right. I very much agree with you. It seems highly likely that we're missing a piece of the puzzle. Working off what we know so far, there are too many things that don't add up. The chances are that there are still some clues left for us to discover. One fact that I keep coming back to is that Amenoma Yuya is polite and well-mannered, while Mr. Nagato is introverted and passive. Neither seems like the type of person who is inclined towards initiating conflict. Mr. Nagato, being heavily in debt, is also the only one of them with the potential motive to disappear after the fire. The more I ponder it, the more puzzling it becomes. Just what could have happened there? Right. Although the time frame seems to broadly match, no other details that we've learned seem to link the two events together. Amenoma Yuya lacks a key distinguishing feature of the attacker. Namely, that he is principally a practitioner of the blade testing techniques of Amenoma art, not those of the combat oriented Ishin art. Darn! We thought we could get two birds with one stone here, but at this rate, it's starting to look like a wild goose chase! Hmm. Let's keep going, since we've come this far. If we can solve the case, both Mr. Amenoma and Mrs. Nagato will be able to get some closure. Okay, but where should we go now? Let's head out of the city and check out the warehouse. 
there's still a chance we may be able to find some shreds of evidence. Wait. I hear something ominous in the wind. Oh! This must be another one of those sounds that only you can hear. As sketchy as that whole thing seems, you did put it to good use when we were chasing down that vision thief at Beto's tournament, so... Hmm. Now I'm picking up a strong scent in addition to the sound. It's right around here somewhere. There's nothing here. It's gone now, but I can still sense the direction it left in. It felt very much like that ancient presence in Inazuma. The remnants of the Tatarigami. Indeed. But this unexpected spring of inauspicious energy may prove to be of benefit to our investigation. We should remain vigilant, and approach slowly. Huh! So it's an underground warehouse! The force is definitely coming from down below. The source of the Tatarigami energy has long since left this place. But the residue it left behind still hasn't dissipated completely. Judging from the concentration... I would have to conclude that the Tatarigami source resided here for a very long time. Mrs. Nagato said her husband used to hang around the warehouse by himself a lot. It could well be that he was already under the influence of Tatarigami energy at that time. From what I've been told, Tatarigami does not turn all upon whom it preys into violent monsters. But most will develop a stubborn streak upon being exposed to the Tatarigami's unfulfilled will. Their interests become fanatical obsessions. Mr. Nagato had an interest in collecting to begin with. The influence of Tatarigami could explain why he became an obsessive hoarder, amassing more and more possessions even as he put himself in grave debt. Um... So what should we do now? Go down and take a look? Step back. I'll open the door and take a look inside. If we don't open this door, we can move no closer to the truth. You needn't worry. Both of us have faced far greater dangers than this. Relatively speaking, the risk here is trivial. Hmm. What's down there? Everything's buried in debris. I can't see anything. It looks like the fire caused a cave-in, reducing the entire warehouse to rubble. That was too scary! Paimon was so sure that the warehouse boogeyman was about to jump out at us! 